you have seen uh, until now uh, pressure measurement and uh, the vacuum measurement. Vacuum measurement, we know it is uh, again a pressure. It is a low pressure than atmospheric conditions. So we call it vacuum. So it's again a pressure measurement. Vacuum is pressure measurement. So uh, whatever uh, the technique we used for the pressure measurement, we can use it for uh, vacuum measurement also. For example, Bodan gauge uh, and um, bellows, uh, diaphragms. If you put the one side, uh, for example, uh, the if you take Bodan tube, Bodan tube is there. Uh, this is what you have seen. If we can uh, put this at, uh, the, uh, the atmospheric conditions into a casing, and uh, this you evacuate. If you evacuate the uh, surrounding in which the Bodan tube is uh, put, then Bodan tube itself can measure the low pressure or vacuum pressure. Similarly, a diaphragm. When we see dia, when we have got diaphragm, and uh, this side, if we say P is equal to zero vacuum, and here it is uh, 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 some pressure P I. Uh, vacuum pressure, then you will find uh, we can measure the vacuum pressure also lower than atmospheric conditions. So, the uh, Bodan tube, uh, the pressure, uh, the diaphragm, or the bellows can also be used to measure vacuum of, uh, of, uh, of uh, low and moderate values. Uh, uh, other methods we have seen in detail last, cla last class that is, Maclear gauge and the viscous uh, vacuum gauge and Pirani gauge and all other methods. Otherwise, we can whatever method we are used to for the pressure measurement can use can use it provided the surrounding in which uh, the instrument is there is evacuated and the absolute pressure is uh, vacuum pressure is applied inside the tube. That way we can measure it. Uh, today we are going to see another one sound sound measurement. Sound is also a pressure because what is sound? It is a mechanical uh, disturbance taking place in uh, the air in air or liquid or in solid. Sound can be propagated by any one of these uh, medium uh, air or uh, air gas or the liquid or sound or the li solid these three can uh, uh, transmit sound what is actually sound when we say light light is electromagnetic wave uh, electromagnetic wave light whereas sound is mechanical uh, mechanical wave uh, when we when we got a source so th this is a source a yeah, source it will produce if it will produce some sound that means uh, the nearby molecules, I mean any vibrations, any vibrations, any mechanical vibrations, any mechanical vibration having a frequency of with the frequency of with the frequency of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is there then the sound is produced because sound frequency is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Suppose we vibrate uh, now what I am vibrating is 1 or 2 hertz that is all. So, no sound is there. But if I can vibrate at uh, 20, uh, 20 to 20 kilohertz in that frequency naturally sound is made. That sound is propagated in air. How it is done? When, uh, when mo movement is there the nearby air molecules are compressed and then when the movement is away then the air molecules are rarefied. So, you find alternatively compression and uh, rarefaction of air molecules takes place around the uh, around the sound uh, sound producing source. So, that uh, waviness is produced is uh, is maintained and uh, it is propagates uh, through the medium of air or the gas or liquid or solid that is the propagation of sound. Now, we are uh, concerned here the measurement of sound it is because uh, we consider sound as uh, sound here sound measurement mainly refers to noise that is noise is unwanted sound unwanted sound is noise. And when we like that sound, we say music. When uh, music is uh, frequency is particular or in slow uh, step variations, slow variations, not sudden variation in frequency or tone. When there is all sorts of variations in frequency and tone, then such a sound is uh, unpleasant and uh, then we call it noise. Noise is a public nuisance. Why? Uh, when there is a noise, we only, I have to shout over the noise. Or when somebody talks, uh, somebody talks. He has, to, uh, I cannot hear because there is some other disturbing source. So, that man has to, that means my hearing power, okay, hearing is disturbed by the presence of yeah, uh, some other sound. So, we, we, we know it is a public nuisance sound and uh, these noises. And uh, in order to reduce such noise, uh, engineers take many, many efforts. Will they design the equipment? And we made a note in uh, newspapers advertisement uh, so a typewriter, noise free typewriter, electronic noise free typewriter. 
a mechanical typewriter we say for that one better feature is on good feature is nice nice uh, less nice uh, this typewriter makes less noise like that so nice free machines nice free operators have got that is a special specification for many things so we will we design an instrument naturally we have to see that noise is reduced uh, to the extent possible so naturally whether noise is reduced or not how do you know unless we measure the noise we cannot uh, know we cannot specify or quantify the noise that is what you are learning here how to quantify noise so um, uh, for that uh, we have this uh, unit sound pressure level sound pressure level is unit simply it's called spl it is defined as 20 log to the base 10 p by 20 decibel where p, p is in p is in uh, p is in micro pascal micro pascal that is rms uh, variation of the or the, we know how the uh, sound varies sound has got all these frequencies so when we talk uh, the frequency of uh, sound is varying and uh, that means the this is atmospheric pressure this is atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure so the atmospheric pressure will varying when there is a compression this is rarefy rarefaction all these variations random variations within the frequency of 20 hertz 20 kilohertz is taking place this is the pressure variations this rms value of it root mean square value of it uh, that value that is p is in micro pascal that value is 20 <coughs> Uh, that value is to be substituted here and uh, that is at 1000 micro pascal at 1000 hertz that is a reference uh, uh, reference frequency because the 20 represents 20 micro pascal at 1000 hertz represent the threshold of hearing it is called threshold threshold of hearing what is threshold of hearing the necessary pressure to make us uh, uh, make us hear any sound if the sound is less than 20 micro pascal uh, at say 1000 hertz then we cannot hear that is the uh, capability of our ear human ear so if uh, the p produced by a source is equal to 20 pascal log one is zero that is it is just uh, when zero decibel means it just uh, near our near uh, near about our capability to identify sound source anything more than that we take the logarithm scale uh, so uh, where do, do we take the logarithm scale logarithm scale normally adopted when the range is very large we suppose uh, the range is uh, say 10 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 10 can we take uh, can we can we have a linear scale to represents uh, 1 to 10 to the power of 10 units even 1 to 1000 units means uh, it's very difficult to represent in linear scale and 10 to the power of 10 uh, definitely we cannot represent in linear scale so in such case we go for the uh, we go for the logarithm scale actually we find that uh, what is the range here 20 micro pascal is the that is 20 into 10 to the power of minus 6 pascal that is the uh, lowest value it measures and what is highest value it is nearly about uh, uh, the threshold of pain 140 rocket uh, engine and atmosphere pressure is 194 that is equal to 10 to the power of 5 pascal atmosphere pressure is uh, the, the scale range it varies up to 10 to the power of 5 pascal equal to 1, 1 atmosphere pressure that means what is total range uh, say it is a 10 to the power of uh, near about 10 to the power 11 this is the range 1 to 10 to the power 11 units represent in uh, linear scale is not possible so we go for the logarithm scale so uh, the sound pressure level the sound pressure level is always measured by this spl defined by 20 log uh, p by 20 decibel where p is the sound variations in rms this rms means you have to uh, square it and then uh, take uh, root mean square value the, the, this is variation on both sides so that is the, that is a pressure sound pressure so in a sense we were supposed to measure the variation of sound measurement means the pressure measurement how the pressure varies around atmospheric pressure around atmospheric value that is what we are going to measure that's why we are learning sound measurement along with the pressure vacuum uh, also we are measuring this and uh, some of the uh, some of the values uh, spl decibel uh, sound pressure level for uh, in decibel for known uh, sound sources are tabulated here soft whisper when two people sit nearby and uh, whispering some information um, they, and we measure to a two meter distance the distance is important when you measure sound at what distance we measure sound is important because the longer the distance sound uh, level sound pressure gets reduced sound is reduced it is inversely proportional suppose if we double the distance then the sound pressure is Halfed, it, half of the earlier pressure. 
So that is the case with the sound. Also, we it is stated we have to this is inverse proportionality. It is called inverse inverse proportionality. Inverse proportionality of sound. That is there. If we measure the if we measure the, if we have the distances for minimum distance is four times minimum four times the four times the uh, dimensions of the dimension of the source. Yeah. Suppose a uh, typewriter say one one foot uh, in length, then four feet away from four feet. Later on we can measure the distance within the four feet. Uh, we find it is not uh, observing this uh, rule of inverse proportionality. What is inverse proportionality? That is sound pressure will be pro will be inverse proportional distance. That is not valid when the when we are measuring too near. That is one aspect of sound. Second aspect is the when uh, when we have a sound uh, making body and uh, it is not making equal pressure in all directions. In certain directions it makes larger pressure than the other direction. That is called directional property of sound. This is the directional property property of sound. This is uh, the bo both the things inverse proportional of sound and also directional property of sound will be valid only when we measure the sound uh, in an open space. There should not be any nearby wall. If there is nearby wall, what happens when the sound is made in by one object that uh, we are measuring sound here in. We are measuring the directly coming sound as well as the sound comes and falls here and reflected. That sound also we will measure. So when there is a reflecting walls nearby, then that sound also is measured. Reflected sound also measured along with the original sound from the source. So we should, we should when we make the sound measurement, we should be very careful that the nearby there is no wall. Under this situation only, these two uh, la, uh, these two rules are valid. So that's why in many places we find the sound. What what is the uh, sound measurement distance for sound is also given. Soft whisper when it is measured at a two meter distance, then it is 35 decibel. Then small town residents general noise in a small town will be around 45 decibel. In urban residents like Madras or Madurai, big cities, you will find a lot of movement for traffic and all. We find a 50 decibel is the average sound level. Then auto uh, uh, at 100 kilometers uh, per hour running at 3 meter distance if you measure 65 decibel, mechanical typewriter 75 decibel and heavy truck lorry with lo loaded lorry at 15 meter distance if you measure 85 decibel and pneumatic chipper because pneumatic will make lot of sound 140. What is threshold of pain? If the decibel is around 140 decibel, if the specific value then your eye ear starts paining. That paining value is 140 decibel. And we find rocket engine when it uh, takes off, it makes 170 decibel. That is the reason the scientists are housed in a closed, uh, closed uh, housing with uh, with wind with glass windows so that they can observe the uh, taking off of the rocket as well as their ear is protected. Otherwise, it is more than 170 decibel, more than the threshold of pain. Your uh, your ear will go away in no time. So that is very important. The atmosphere pressure around 194 decibel. So these are the uh, so, uh, uh, rocket engine. Rocket, another point is rocket engine pressure is so high. Sometimes the rocket uh, panels fail due to fatigue, st fatigue uh, stress produced by the uh, uh, sound uh, at the time of takeoff of the booster rocket. So uh, sound you cannot neglect it. Sound produces some even failure of some parts. So measurement, so measurement of sound is very important. And the instrument used to measure the sound is called sound level meter. It is here, it is sound level meter. That instrument what we use to measure the sound is sound level meter. And um, uh, it is made up of uh, some basic important units I have put here that is in signal flow diagram. First we have got so called microphone. Mic is one that is what I have here also it is mic. It converts the sound into electrical voltage, electrical voltage. Well, the uh, what is sound? Sound is nothing. Pressure variation we already learnt. This pressure variation of this uh, what I have seen earlier. This uh, pressure variation will be of this nature. This is the pressure variation around the atmospheric pressure, and uh, it converts into voltage variation of the same of the same nature. So voltage variations, pressure to sound. That all what it achieves the microphone. 
and one or two versions are there which we will see little later. As far as now we will say microphone achieves the changeover of pressure to or transduces pressure to pressure variation into voltage variation. Then it is amplified, the pressure that voltage is amplified because it may be very weak, it amplifies. Then we call so called waiting network, waiting network is an important unit in any sound level meter. It, the, we have got three scales, A scale, B scale, C scale and another one is flat which does not belong to any one of these things. See what we, what uh, the waiting network got important says, uh, the loudness, loudness is different from loudness, is different, uh, is a function of, loudness is a function of SPL and frequency hertz, that is important. See the we have go, we have got equal loudness curves. See the the loudness uh, phenomena can be explained with this equal loudness curve. Here uh, uh, the we say a scale has got has got 40 decibel SPL value at 1000 hertz. Such a tone such a tone is called a weighted network, and a little higher loudness say 70 decibel at 1000 hertz we call it B scale and 100 decibel at 1000 hertz, any noise, any sound has got such a uh, decibel at this 1000 hertz, they are grouped under these three, uh, three scales, A, B, C scales. Most of the research purposes we go for the A scale. So anyhow, these are the three scales available in any sound level meter or we can specially order a meter only with A scale also, that is also available in the market. In the A scale, the, uh, the uh, sound or the loudness made by 40 decibel at uh, 1000 hertz. Will uh, then another sound having 20 hertz frequency making 90 decibel uh, SPL value, both in the both of them that 40, 40 decibel at 1000 hertz and uh, 90 decibel at 20 hertz, both will have the same loudness. That is why it is called la, la, equal loudness curve. Equal loudness curve. So, uh, say for example, 100, uh, 100, suppose it is 100, then 60 decibel, 60 decibel at 100 hertz will make uh, say uh, a, a noise equal to 40 decibel at uh, 1000 hertz. That is why I, I have put loudness is a function of SPL and the frequency. So uh, what we are measuring in this uh, sound level meter is the loudness. So if, if SPL alone is obtained according to our definition 20 log to the base 10 P by 20, that is not sufficient. We should uh, you see after all a human being only is judging the uh, noise source and he will judge only dip, dip based upon the uh, loudness, the loudness is loudness of the machine. So loudness is important for our comparison of the machines. So naturally the weighting network brings the value of the SPL to the loudness. How it does? It has got so the attenuation of weighting network. What it does? Suppose uh, they have uh, so noise has got 20 hertz and that noise is making 90 decibel. Uh, uh, 90 decibel pressure variation, then what it will do since it is equal to 40 decibel at 1000 hertz, it will subtract from 90 that 50 make it 40. So, that loudness is uh, loudness is seen in the indicative meter as 40 decibel Low, loudness because that is equal to 90. So, what it does, it subtracts 50 that is attenuation, what it attenuate at 20 hertz, whatever be the pressure, uh, whatever the SPL value, from that it will subtract 50 and indicate the remaining value. That means, at if it is 90 decibel at 20 hertz, our meter will show and only as 40 decibel, it is because that now loudness is equal to loudness of 90 decibel is equal to loudness of 40 decibel at 1000 hertz. So, it will show 40. Similarly, A and B and C weighting and all, what they will subtract for a given frequency is given here. That is this uh, network, electronic network, what do we have uh, under the uh, weighting network. This electronic unit, it will sense the frequency accordingly, it will subtract the uh, value and the remaining value goes there further. So, next it goes to uh, um, amplifier, output amplifier and then it can either go to indicating meter where we have the reading, where we have the reading uh, so many decibel, so many decimal we may have or we can also take the output of the output amplifier for analysis, especially in machines and uh, equipments where we want to locate the, because an equipment or instrument is made up of hundreds of parts and which part makes the noise, maximum noise we would like to locate. If you locate that part, 
then probably we will change it to another part making less noise. So, for such purposes, we have to analyze that signal or for the frequency analysis. Yeah. It is done with the help of a octave band, octave band analyzer. It is called octave, octave band analyzer. Analyzer. What it does, octave band means the it will have band band pass filter. It will have a set of octave. For example, octave band analyzer will have a set of um, uh, set of band pass filter. Band pass band pass filter. Center frequency of each band pass filter, uh, subsequent band pass filters will have a ratio of two. That is why it is called octave band pass filter. Center frequency of subsequent band pass filter will have a ratio of 2. So, you select one uh, band pass filter, measure that uh, SPL value. For that, for analysis purpose, you have to use flat under the flat, because under if you put flat, the weighting network will not do any subtraction. It will uh, pass the SPL value as it is without any subtraction, that is why it is called flat. Under flat condition, we have to analyze. So, band pass filter, so you select one band pass filter, one band pass filter with certain center frequency, find the value of SPL and then switch over to the next band pass filter uh, having a ratio of 2 center frequency and again measure the SPL value and then plot it. For example, I have I got a plot of for the blower, electrical blower, electrical motor, how much noise it has made, uh, is plot of SPL or I will simply write SPL of a blower measured value. So, here it is uh, 63 hertz, one center frequency, other center frequency 125, then 250 like that it goes 250, 500, so 1000, uh, 2000 that is how the center frequency goes and uh, here we have got 40 decibel, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90. So, from 75 onwards it goes. So, to 125, 125 maximum. So, 75 it goes like that. So, this is the plot or the different center frequency we got this plot. So, from here we know uh, that at 125 hertz it produces the maximum noise. Probably 125 hertz may be a rotating speed of a gear, gear machine. Then we find one of the gear, uh, gear, one of the two gear machines, uh, one of the two gear uh, machine gears. We change it to if they are metallic, we can change it to uh, say one plastic gear. One plastic gear machine with uh, metallic gear will make very less noise. Then after making that again measure, then you will find it will this uh, this will go away. Like that, we effect improvement in the, in the reducing noise in many equipment. So for that purpose, we can analyze this uh, signal also. Now, we will see how the uh, microphone uh, functions. We have seen in the sound level meter, microphone transduces the sound or pressure variation into voltage variation. How this is obtained? Uh, we will see one version that is the capacitor type. If this is a capacitor type, capacitor type microphone. Uh, for example, we have for a capacitor we have got two plates. The whenever we changes the distance, whenever we change the distance between the two plates, uh, the capacitance varies. That can made use of in suitable electrical circuit, and we can get corresponding voltage signal. That is what is the principle used here. The capacitor is made up of the diaphragm on which the sound is, sound pressure is falling, sound is acting, or impinges on that surface. And so, uh, depending upon the compression rate of action, the diaphragm moves uh, to and from uh, vibrates. That is uh, ca that constitutes the moving plate. Diaphragm is the moving plate. Diaphragm is of the order of a micron thickness. Metallic uh, diaphragm fixed over the uh, edges uh, around circumference. It is it's circular diaphragm. Below that, we have got so-called fixed plate. It's also a metallic piece with the uh, damping holes because when the diaphragm vibrates uh, at high frequency. Uh, if it is allowed, the diaphragm may uh, break. So, to avoid the amplitude of, to uh, control the amplitude of vibrations, uh, some damping is produced by having damping holes in the fixed plate like this, damping holes. What happens when the diaphragm comes down, it compresses the air molecule and uh, makes them to flow through this uh, restricted path, thereby some damping force is 
uh, created and uh, the amplitude of vibration is controlled. So, controlled vibration is there in the, uh, in the diaphragm. That is also achieved by having a capillary leak here, a capillary leaks atmosphere pressure, this atmosphere pressure, uh, the average atmosphere pressure will always find its place uh, below the uh, diaphragm. Otherwise, uh, the diaphragm may also break. And also, if when you want to have what is the pressure variation due to sound over and above uh, atmospheric conditions, atmospheric pressure, we should have the atmospheric pressure here and here. So, that is how the atmospheric pressure also is taken here uh, through a capillary tube, capillary piping, uh, to a capillary tubing. So, now the this is a capacitor where the distance is very due to the vibration of the diaphragm. And you find with a uh, insulator, these two are separated, these two plates are separated and uh, the uh, center uh, piece as well as the uh, housing outside where the housing, it is metallic housing, where the diaphragm is fixed is uh, connected to a battery under resistance R. So, it, it forms a full circuit with a capacity, it forms a full circuit, the simple circuit with a single capacitor with a constant resistance. So, whenever the uh, gap changes, capacitance changes, there is a current flow to and fro and then that uh, current flow through constant resistor gives rise to voltage drop of EO. Now, whatever the pressure variation, same variation is around that will take place in EO also. That means, we have converted the pressure variation into uh, voltage variation. This is a capacity type. In a, another one, piezoelectric, uh, piezoelectric type uh, microphone, yeah. piezoelectric. Piezoelectric microphone. There, piezoelectric crystal, for example, quartz is uh, just to put below the diaphragm. Whenever the pressure is varying, the quartz crystal uh, will is compressed, and and then you will find uh, a charge is produced. That charge is amplified in a, uh, in a charge amplifier. Then you have the voltage output. That will be varying same way as the pressure variations. That also is available in the market. Yeah. That is, uh, with the diaphragm, we convert, we convert the pressure variation into force. That force acting over the crystal will produce a deformation in the crystal and that produces charge amplified in, in charge amplifier, we get the voltage output. There is, these are the two principles uh, for the con uh, converting the pressure variation into uh, sound, uh, uh, pr pr sound pressure variation into voltage variation. Now, when we want to measure the uh, uh, noise, what are the precautions? We are not, so the, the precautions are given by the manufacturer from whom we purchase the sound level meter. He will say do not hold the, do not hold the sound level meter like this because uh, for suppose source is there, they it measures this directly uh, for, uh, noise from the source as well as the source sound uh, reflected from the body also may be picked up by the sound level meter. So, he will always say uh, hold the sound level meter uh, by extended arm that uh, pointing towards the source, it should be some, suppose uh, mic is here, it should pointing towards the source. So, so it, we should hold like that only and at a particular distance because distance uh, decides the, uh, the amount of uh, pressure variations. If we go double the distance, pressure variation uh, is uh, reduced to half the, uh, so uh, in all measurements of sound, we are supposed to measure the distance at which, we are supposed to quote the distance at which sound is measured. That is one thing. Secondly, I was telling there should not be any nearby walls and wall and all. That is, will be taken care of if we are using you know, the method of using an anechoic chamber. Anechoic chamber is one where inside, it is uh, inside the room or the chamber, there is particular construction the, uh, to avoid any sound reflection, reflection of noise. That is, the all the, suppose there is a chamber, it has got six walls, bottom, top and four side walls. All the six walls should be uh, should be filled with the so called wedges made from sound absorbing material. So, uh, whenever sound is made uh, by a source, suppose this is a source, sound is going and uh, since it is a wedge, it gets reflected within the uh, wedge formation once or twice and uh, it gets absorbed within that uh, one or two reflection gets fully absorbed and nothing more can come out to be picked up by the sound level meter. So, the sound level meter will measure only the sound produced by the uh, source alone it will measure. No reflected sound will be coming here. But uh, normally the size of such uh, anika chamber is, is uh, sufficiently big because we should have a door opening to put to our source as well as instrument having electrical connection and all. Providing all these things it works out to be a big, uh, big chamber and any laboratory you should have a sufficient space <coughs> otherwise 
this will occupy in big space and after making one project and uh, until next project after few years you may not be able to keep it there and you may destroy it so there is second method if you cannot and also if you want to purchase it is costly one also uh, second method is by making background noise also we can measure the noise made by the uh, device that is now you have to make two measurements with the uh, with the sound level meter suppose source is there uh, making noise and uh, surrounding also will make noise so you make one measurement called total total noise total noise one measurement where the source is running also atmospheric uh, uh, noise also is there total now you switch off the uh, source so it's a running machine you know so you switch off the power supply so the source will stop no no noise so you will be measuring the background noise so you measure the total noise and then uh, after switching off measure the background noise from these two measurements you can obtain the source measurement by using this equation one equation 2 is obtained from one only so but it is in terms of uh, in terms of our required quantity we are uh, we want to measure the uh, we want to measure the source noise so you can use it suppose you have two machines identical machines i assuming to, uh, background noise is zero if you want to measure the total noise then you can use this uh, one uh, equation one total noise equal to uh, l machine one and l s is a machine two so lm1 and lm2 you can put like that and then get the total uh, total noise for that in such instance you can use the first one so suppose uh, two machines making same noise then you will find a uh, uh, total noise will be increased by two machines two identical machine identical identical machines uh, total noise uh, that is total noise uh, from two identical machines um, will be will be more by 3 decibels by 3 decibels suppose uh, 3 decibel suppose each machine is making uh, say 65 each machine making 65 decibel 65 decibel that is machine 1 machine 1 and machine 2 make uh, then total noise will be 68 decibels that you can check in this uh, equation also the identical machines making same uh, decibel if they are put together total noise will be only 68 decibel it is increased by 3 decibels that you can check in this equation that is the way uh, that is easier way of making uh, measurements of noise instead of the Hanika exam which is costlier but you, you should have a control over the background noise that is sometimes very tough that is why in, in our laboratory when you want to make such noises such noise measurements we come at midnight so that uh, uh, around uh, there will be less noise uh, only noise from the birds and uh, the wind uh, may be there but it may be more or less constant and then we make measurements so you have to select suitable timing to make such measurements so with this we will complete this uh, the uh, sound measurements now we go to the flow measurement uh, next topic flow measurement this also one of the important process parameters we are seeing now process parameters first we start at temperature in process and chemical industries temperature pressure and then flow these are the three important measurements any process or fertilizer industries uh, chemical industries these are the three important measurements uh, plus flow is to be controlled precisely to get the required quantities of uh, any product uh, uh, for that uh, there are many methods uh, we are not going to see all the methods for example uh, obstruction type flow meter there is a pipe and you put a uh, uh, obstruction type flow meter so the in obstruction this obstruction and this is a flow direction this is uh, here when it flows it will be flowing like this we measure the upstream pressure and the low steam pressure we at mean a contractor and then measure with the help of the manometer and these are what we normally learn under hydraulics and all the positive type flow meters are there to, to make the measurements so all those things i am not going to do it only few uh, other special methods used uh, for, for flow measurements alone we are going to see under this topic mechanical measurements first and foremost we are taking the pitta tube pitta tube is very often used to locate the uh, to find out the velocity of the flow at, uh, at any point so you can insert it at a different heights so that uh, you can get the uh, velocity distribution uh, inside the pipe suppose this is the pipe cross section and uh, that uh, pipe uh, velocity may be varying like this 
this may be the velocity at uh, boundary layer the velocity will be zero zero velocity at the middle it will have maximum this parabolic distribution of velocity in any cross line uh, cross section of a uh, pipe so once you get this velocity distribution and you can get later on average average velocity you can find out average velocity for this uh, cross section and uh, average velocity this is uh, average v average v average times the cross section of the uh, piping will give you the total flow in the pipe flow rate or flow rate in the pipe so for that you can find you can use the pitot tube also what is the principle of function of pitot tube what you are going to see we have got so called stagnation point that is it is a it is a tubing like this we have got at center point you own tubing and uh, annular another uh, uh, space is there where the opening is made to the flow i say at the four times uh, distance from this uh, tip end we have to diameter of this uh, uh, support we have to provide for holes for the state this is here only static pressure will enter so here you are at the stagnation point both the velocity head as well as static pressure will uh, will be uh, will be will be made uh, will be available here because velocity also become zero pressure is static pressure already is there so total pressure pt by gamma gamma is the specific weight of this uh, uh, gas or liquid whatever it flows uh, pt by gamma, that pressure head is equal to ps static pressure by gamma plus v squared over v is the velocity of the flow v squared over 2g so this is the total head available at the stagnation point that is taken through a tubing to the manometer where you have got a mercury manometer is available the other limb of the manometer is connected to the static pressure static pressure this is the static pressure with uh, so we have to ensure it is only static pressure is there for that you should see this axis of this pitot tube and the flow direction coincides otherwise suppose it is tilted somewhat like this i have shown exaggerated suppose it is tilted then you will find through this hole some of the velocity head also will enter so static head shown by this pitot tube will be larger once the uh, uh, there is a tilting this angle is called ya angle ya angle ya angle should be zero for correct measurement that is angle between the pitot tube axis and the flow direction is called a angle and that should be zero so when zero means only uh, uh, the uh, static pressure alone will come here that is shown here the difference between these two things static pressure and this you will get the um, you will get the p v square over 2g uh, that is pt minus ps by gamma gamma got this side we got this v square over v square over 2g into gamma and now the pressure difference the pressure difference in these two limbs is also given by pt minus ps equal to w into h w is the specific weight of the mercury so uh, the uh, pressure uh, the uh, comparing these two equation you can find uh, v is equal to, that is velocity is equal to 2g w h by gamma gamma is mercury specific weight gamma is the uh, specific specific weight of the uh, flow the gamma by g also you can say rho uh, uh, the density of the flow medium both are same so by this we can get the velocity at any given point and later on we can find out the uh, total uh, flow rate in this medium the one problem here is the error source is at this cross section in the uh, uh, if we compare these two cross sections you find in this cross section this much area is uh, occupied by this pitot tube naturally the flow in this section flow velocity will be more flow velocity will be more than this cross section that means when total head remains same flow velocity increases the ps the or uh, this uh, static pressure here will be smaller than the static pressure uh, undisturbed static pressure that's called some something like loading effect process of measurements disturb the parameters of measurement so uh, to avoid it what is done is uh, there is another thing this is a support uh, side of the pitot tube it also obstructs the flow obstructs the flow means the static pressure increase by suitable distance of this uh, limb to the hole you will find the pressure drop uh, static pressure drop and the pressure rise both can match equally and then you can nullify that effect but the proper dimensioning is important that is this error source which can be accommodate which can be uh, uh, properly thought and then uh, uh, it can be nullified but these are the some of the error sources next method we are seeing is hot wire anemometer the construction of hot wire anemometer is somewhat like this so this is uh, the support so there is a wire very thin wire of few microns diameter uh, for about uh, few mm or not 2 mm length uh, fixed there in the support 
So, whenever the flow is there, the heat is dissipated from the wire to the flowing medium. So, this is the wire, it resistance changes, it res resistance is changing uh, depending upon the flow velocity. So, that resistance forms part of a 4 ohm bridge, Wheatstone bridge and uh, where each uh, other arm uh, will be of the uh, same order of the uh, 1 ohm. So, uh, then output impedance we know we have learnt already will be order of 1 ohm and uh, this is excitation voltage for the bridge and uh, the resistance series will be of the order of 2 kilo ohm. So, naturally you will find the current flow through the whole circuit is controlled by the adjustment of the series resistance R4 because it is of order of 2 kilo ohm the whole resistance uh, gives an equivalent re resistance only 1 ohm. So, the current can be controlled by this. This is the construction of a hardware anvometer. Yeah. What is the equation, governing equation for this heat dissipation? I squared Rw, I is the current flow through this wire, exposed wire that this wire Rw uh, equal to h into A into Tw minus T, where h is the heat transfer coefficient, film coefficient of heat transfer in watt per or uh, joule per second per degree centigrade per meter square. So, into area, area of the surface area of this wire, surface area of the wire into difference between the, uh, this is uh, flow, flow temperature, gas, gas flow temperature and minus uh, T f, T f is the temperature of the, T f is the uh, wire temperature, wire temperature is the uh, T w, flow temperature is uh, T w, uh, T f because from higher temperature to lower temperature, uh, the heat flows. So, the wire will be at high temperature when we switch on the power supply to the exit to the network bridge network they get due to current flow temperature raised to a high level and from there the heat is dissipated to the flowing fluid this is the governing equation for this. Now, h is a function of velocity we I told when higher flow means higher heat will be transferred. So, that is governed by this h equal to c 1 plus c 2 where c 1 and c 2 are constants into root v c 2 into root v. So, in, uh, incorporating this equation in here and obtaining this equation i squared r w is equal to now this is in terms of heights. Now, this equation uh, indicates two, uh, two mode of mode of operation. One mode ca is called current constant constant current mode of operation under that i squared is constant. So, when v is changed t w wire is changed when i is kept constant for uh, increased uh, velocity t w has to come down. Yeah? that is the constant uh, uh, current mode of operation in that uh, and another one is uh, constant temperature mode of operation that is uh, wire temperature is always kept constant. Whenever the uh, whenever uh, the flow increases to maintain the wire temperature I is increase because when the flow is increase naturally the wire temperature will come down because larger heat is taken to bring it back you have to send more current that is the second mode of operation that is called the constant current uh, constant temperature mode of operation that is constant temperature mode of operation. These are the two mode of operation in which the hot wire anemometer is made use of. Now, the cal calibration procedure is as follows. First keep the uh, keep uh, the hot wire anemometer in still gas, still gas that is 0 velocity and adjust the value of R 4 so that maximum current can flow through the uh, wire. So, it does so that it does not burn out. So, under that you have got uh, uh, under, uh, under that condition uh, whatever the current flow in through uh, through the galvanometer that is imbalance current. So, when there is 0 velocity means no heat is taken out practically that means it will assume maximum uh, temperature and hence maximum uh, resistance also. So, maximum imbalance and then you will have the higher current this this is the for 0 velocity the what is the current flow through the galvanometer then send uh, uh, well, uh, then gas at known velocities. So, that is for V 1 uh, that is for V 1 this for V 2 for known velocity find out the imbalance current in the uh, Im imbalance uh, current flow through the galvanometer. So, it is we call it constant uh, current mode because uh, once we adjusted this later on current through this uh, cannot be changed that the current flow through the circuit is controlled only by only by adjustment of R 4 once that is uh, adjusted for the maximum current flow later on we are not touching current flow flow more or less remains same. So, the uh, due to R w changes imbalance current is changing that what you are making use of here uh, to plot it for known velocities and for any unknown velocity we can uh, we can find out the 
current uh, for any unknown velocity from the current we can get it we can get the velocity that is the constant uh, current mode of operation in constant temperature mode of operation the equation same equation one can be written like this and you will find uh, i squared is equal to uh, is equal to c3 plus c4 where all these things because kw is going to co remain constant uh, that is constant temperature so you will find uh, c3 c4 into root v so is o is equal to m o is equal to mx plus c format uh, that is root v. So, uh, uh, having root v as x axis, i squared as uh, y axis, then you will find it is a linear relation. Again, here also the uh, 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 calibration is uh, similar, that is, uh, we still have the still gas, adjust the current flow to the, uh, uh, the current flow to have the maximum, and uh, find out the current flow through the current flow through the RW, that is, this meter current you have to take, you have to note down that is the current flow for zero velocity. Then at uh, different velocities gas will be flowing and adjust the, adjust the uh, R4 for another one, uh, another velocity adjust R4 so that the uh, G will, uh, will be brought back to uh, zero, but what is the current flow through this you can find out, when necessary current flow through this. To bring the balance back, uh, what is the current flow that you can find out, that is uh, I1 for velocity 1, similarly I2. So, you plot this uh, curve um, uh, for, the, for the current through the current through the RW and uh, for any unknown velocities uh, from I squared, from I measurement you can get the I, I squared then to get the root V from that V we can find out. So, you find the constant uh, temperature mode of operation you have to uh, make adjustments for because current we have to change that is manual. So, the constant temperature mode of operation can be used for only static measurements whereas constant current mode operation can be used for static and dynamic. But uh, going uh, switching over to automatic breath balancing, we can use this constant temperature mode of operation even for dynamic measurement also. That is done like this. Uh, that is Rw by air temperature. So, to start with R, R3 uh, is made larger than R4. And again same procedure at zero velocity of the gas you fill it up and then you switch on immediately you know R3 is larger than R4. So, immediately imbalance will be there, that imbalance voltage will be uh, amplified and the current will be sent back, so that R3, RW is brought near about R3. Whatever the current flow required to bring uh, R W to R3 and that flow through uh, capital R, uh, constant resistance gives rise to voltage output E. So, for zero velocity, what is the current required? Similarly, for any other velocities, what is the current required to bring the, uh, bring the RW to near about R3? that will be current flow through this and uh, by, uh, by plotting similar curves we can find out say for uh, EO, EO versus velocity we can velocities. We can have some uh, somewhat like this and then from the uh, for any unknown velocity from the measured voltage we can get back the uh, velocity of the fluid. Yeah.